No date stands out more in the history of the LBJ Library than May 22, 1971. That's when dignitaries from across the nation gathered on the lawn outside for dedication ceremonies that officially opened the brand new building to the public. Design of the building, led by renowned architect Gordon Bunshaft, had been completed in 1966, and construction started the following year on the northeast corner of the campus of the University of Texas at Austin. By the spring of 1971, a little more than two years after Lyndon Johnson had left the White House, the building was ready. At the center of the dedication were, of course, LBJ himself, Mrs. Johnson, and their family. They were joined by leaders of the University of Texas, who saw the library as a major resource for the intellectual life of the campus. And they were joined by leading politicians and policymakers from the Johnson years, including former Vice President Hubert Humphrey, and Republican Senator Barry Goldwater, who had been LBJ's opponent in the 1964 presidential race. But it was the presence of LBJ's successor, President Richard Nixon, that best indicated the importance of the event for the life of the nation. The heart of America today, at this moment, is in the heart of Texas, as this distinguished company so well illustrates. It is here to pay tribute to the life of a man and the life of his wife as well, who has given 40 years of service to this state and to this nation. The entire nation is indebted to you, President Johnson. President Johnson established a new standard for presidential libraries, not only with the size of his collection, about 31 million pages of documents from across his life, but also with his vow that the institution would reckon honestly and openly with American history during the turbulent years when he had held office. We're all partners in this hopeful undertaking. The people of Texas have built this library. The National Archive will manage this library. There is no record of a mistake or an unpleasantness or criticism that is not included in the files here. I do not know how this period will later be regarded in the years to come, but that's really not the point. This library will show the facts, not just the joy and the triumphs, but the sorrows and the failures too. One of the people on the stage with LBJ on that day in 1971 was Ben Barnes, a political protege of Lyndon Johnson's, who served as the Lieutenant Governor of Texas during those years. What do you remember best about that day? I remember it was a warm day in May. President Johnson was nervous. He was almost like an expectant father in a waiting room of the hospital. I think he was worried about what the reaction that Nixon was gonna to have to the library, whether there was gonna be a big crowd, or whether the crowd was gonna be enthusiastic. The Vietnam War was still going on and uh, we had had demonstrations uh, on the campus during the war. I think he was worried about maybe an incident taking place, but it, it was a great day and his coloring was good that day. It, it was already showing on Johnson's physical appearance that, that he was not a well man, but that day he, he had uh, rosy cheeks and a, and a smile uh, and a, a nervous smile, but, but yet a, a, very, a very broad smile. So much that has ensued at the library over the past five decades flowed from the tone that LBJ set on that day. The commitment to openness, the dedication to debate on the big issues of public concern, and the enthusiasm for education and discovery. The LBJ Library is still inspired by those same goals that LBJ laid out half a century ago.